Ahoy everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. And a while back I lost a bet with my good friend Mike Matei and the uh, punishment was that I had to watch and review Titanic 2. It, uh, it comes to us from our good friends at the Asylum. I think we all know what the Asylum is now. They make the, uh, the rip-off movies, the mockbusters, and uh, cheesy shark flicks. I think it's pretty clear that this is not a sequel to Titanic. No, it's a movie about a ship called the Titanic 2. <sighs> the biggest star in this film is uh, Bruce Davidson from the X-Men movies and Seinfeld. After him, the most recognizable name in this movie is Brooke Burns. She was from the later seasons of Baywatch and uh, the other Melrose Place, not the one anyone remembers. Our two leads in the film are played by Marie Westbrook from Stuff and Shane Van Dyke, who's also the writer and director. Now I know what you're thinking. Tony from Hack the Movies. Who is Shane Van Dyke? Shane Van Dyke was just a kid from LA who had a dream of making it big. He pulled himself up by his bootstraps and worked tirelessly day and night to make his dream come true. After a lot of hard work, he got his first big break playing three different characters in the show Diagnosis Murder. His story is proof that anyone can come from nothing and make it in Hollywood. Yeah, it's all a lie. He's Dick Van Dyke's grandson. Dick Van Dyke was the star of Diagnosis Murder. He probably just gave the role to him. It was probably really easy to get. In the late 2000s, he started writing for films and turned out Asylum Classics like Transmorphers 2 and The Day the Earth Stopped. He uh, did another film, but we'll get back to it later. Let's talk about uh, Titanic 2. So the movie opens with a glacier breaking and messing up some surfer's day. Bruce Davidson gets a call and has to check it out. He makes sure to call his daughter first, who's getting ready to work on the maiden voyage of the Titanic 2. You know what? I'm going to give this movie some props. They managed to find an actual ship to film on. I, they could have done less. They, they found a ship and they filmed on it. They couldn't film a lot of it, but they filmed it. They even managed to find a crowd. Not a big one, but a crowd nonetheless. And look, I know the CGI gets ripped on in the movie, but they kind of tried. Like, that's clearly a fake ship in this wide shot, which is clearly a still picture. It, it doesn't look great, but it could look worse. They even gave it a little reflection in the water. They could have just ignored that detail, but they gave some effort. Anyways, Bruce Davidson uh, calls his daughter and lets her know that he's worried about her getting on the ship because it barely passed inspection. But he also hates the ship because it was designed by her ex-boyfriend, who was the Shane Van Dyke character. Look at him. He is such a stud. Look how many girls he has. They're so impressed by the size of the ship. It's so big. Airplanes are big, babe. Trains are big. This, this is monumental. So you can guess what happens. The ship gets damaged and starts to sink. But here's the twist. The ship doesn't hit the iceberg. The iceberg hits the ship. Look, I'm not going to do a super deep dive on this movie. It's kind of been done to death. Uh, I would recommend listening to my good friends at the Movie Dumpster podcast. They did a really, really good episode on this. I would definitely check that out. I am going to highlight a couple scenes and moments that I thought stood out and that I really want to talk about. So the bridge of the ship has these big lights bursting through the windows. I'm assuming to hide the fact the ship they filmed on wasn't moving. At night, though, they decided to shut the blinds on the ship. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to leave those open so you can see. It's hilarious when the iceberg scene happens because they all look out a window at it, but they never show the window because they can't. My guess is the ship was docked the whole time and they couldn't open the windows or film in a certain direction because it would show a city. My theory was proven in another scene where a guy runs past a window and you can clearly see the city in the reflection. Also, when the ship gets hit, uh, barely anything is affected. Like, they shake the camera and the actors move around. They throw some objects. But if you look at the surfaces of everything, 
they're all kind of still like the dishes aren't moving off the table the pills aren't coming off the shelf it's it's kind of like this like uh oh no everything's shaking oh, 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 oh but all this stuff is staying still uh yeah they could have just did a little bit better put a put a pa underneath the table and shake it during a scene or something i don't know it just it's really not convincing at all also their luxurious ballroom looks like a school dance hall or a local vfw or something and look at this you can see the bottom of the pool they filmed in. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be the middle of the ocean, but whatever. Okay, I didn't want to compare this movie to James Cameron's Titanic, because that's really not fair. But just for the hell of it, here's what the ship uh, sinking and being flooded looked like in that movie. And here's what the ship sinking and getting flooded looks like in this movie. And then we have the most intense scene in the entire film. The hallway full of wires scene. Our heroes are trying to escape to the ship's diving facility and they come across this crazy obstacle. A puddle on the ground has some wires around it. I imagine the way this was written, like uh, it was supposed to be like ankle or knee deep water or something. And the wire was probably swinging around like a snake, like almost like an actual snake. Like it had a mind of its own. You've seen it in movies before. Uh, but what they got was just a puddle on the ground and someone off camera just wiggling a wire like this. I mean, like, ah. Uh, I know they didn't have the budget or the, the ability to pull off this scene. They probably could have scrapped it and come up with something that was more doable and also exciting. Uh, you know what's not exciting? Seeing two people pretend to like monkey bar across a pole. Like it's so clear that they just did close ups like where they're like this, which is fine. That's what happens in bigger movies, but they usually hide it a little bit better or they try to do more wide shots to show, to make it more exciting. But no, in this one, they just kind of walk along a rickety pole that can hold two people, apparently. It's, I think it's one of the worst scenes I've ever seen. I've never been more less tense and less excited during a scene that's supposed to be tense and exciting. I'm actually surprised Shane Van Dyke killed his character off in the movie. I know it's to rip off Jack dying in James Cameron's film, but he made himself seem like the coolest, most awesome dude in the whole movie. I was willing to bet he would make it out at the end. So that's Titanic 2. Uh, this is the first time I've seen it. It's not very good from what you can imagine. Uh, but this was not the first time I saw a Shane Van Dyke film, no. A uh, year before this, I saw and I own a movie called Paranormal Entity which is a ripoff of Paranormal Activity and this classic film, The Entity. Side note, The Entity is awesome. Or maybe it's not, I don't know. I haven't seen it in a very long time, but I remember really liking this movie. Let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, I'm gonna show you some scenes from this film. Let me know if you notice a recurring theme. And my beautiful sister, Samantha. Samantha, smile at the camera. Smile. Look at her, isn't she pretty? Sorry. Shit. Somebody looks wonderful this morning. Nice. You okay? I'm next door. Hey. Why, why are you shooting me right now? You gonna be alright in here alone? Yeah, this is a movie about a guy who wants to sleep with his sister. The whole ghost demon thing, it's just an afterthought. Uh, I watched this years ago. Uh, I watched it with a friend. And I remember we were creeped out by Shane Van Dyke. 
obviously being sexual with the sister, like trying, trying to hide it. Like, I don't know if it was written to be creepy like that, or if he just had a crush on the actress and was just ad-libbing, because I can't imagine there was much of a script for this found footage ripoff. Uh, yeah, it really, really creeped me out the whole movie. Uh, if you're wondering if there's a scene where his sister's naked and he comes in and hugs her to make sure she's okay, there is. This movie is a straight up ripoff of Paranormal Activity. It lifts so many things directly from that movie, I'm kind of shocked Oren Pelly, the director of those movies, didn't sue. And look, I know I'm giving Shane Van Dyke a bunch of crap, but I will say in recent years he's doing pretty well. Uh, he wrote a movie starring Stanley Tucci, which I think is on Netflix, and uh, him and his brother wrote another horror film called The Chernobyl Diaries. There was another writer on that movie though. Let me let me look it up. Oren Pelly. So Shane rips off this guy's most famous movie and then he ends up like rewriting or co-writing one of his scripts for a different movie. The balls on this guy. What a weird journey we just took. Uh, let me know if you've seen the films of Shane Van Dyke. Uh, I, I would love to see more. I'm gonna check out Transmorphers too. Gotta make sure I see Transmorphers 1 though. I don't wanna be lost. Uh, yeah, so let me know if you've seen this guy's films. Uh, there's something. There's something. I wouldn't recommend Titanic 2. I would recommend Paranormal Entity. Paranormal. I'm having a hard time saying paranormal today. Don't make fun of it in the comments if I screwed it up. Uh, yeah, so that was my review of Titanic 2 with a bonus review thrown in. Uh, Mike, I hope you're happy. I did this. For those of you who don't know, I know I mentioned in the beginning, but we played a game of Windjammers and I lost. He would have had to review Abraxas, which is around here somewhere. We have two copies of Abraxas and I can't find one. There it is. Abraxas. Uh, but he won, so I had to review Titanic too. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Patreon is always going to put more stuff on Patreon. I was busy for a bit, but I'm back in the groove of things. Uh, OnlyFans. Actually, now I need, I remembered I got to post more stuff. Oh, I've been reviewing weird stuff that was sent to the office. Uh, one of them was uh, an adhesive bra. I can't really review that on YouTube, but I can review the hell out of it on uh, OnlyFans. So I might do that there. Yeah, and uh, follow me on all my socials and stuff. And uh, yeah. That sails away, ships away. I what's what's a nautical term for goodbye? I don't know. Bye.